next given an equation. It uses factoring techniques on uh, how you can solve for x given a polynomial, especially a polynomial with an exponent of 2 or higher. So my first example, I have 3x times x plus 1 equal to 0. I already, had, I already have two factors, 3x and x plus 1. And using my ZPP, I can separate my equation into 3x equal to 0 and x plus 1 equal to 0, so I can solve for my x value for my two factors. So my first factor will give me, give me x equals 0 by solving for x. And for my second factor, I'll have x equals negative 1. And these are my values of x's for this particular equation. And for my equation number 2, I have x times 2x minus 1 equal to 0, which is already separated by a factor. So the first factor is x equals 0, and the second factor is 2x minus 1. By using ZPP, I'll have my first value of x, which is x equals 0, and my second value of x is equal to 1 half by solving x or having x by itself. And for my third example, I have another factors, or I have two factors for my equation. I have x plus 5 and 3x plus 7 equal to 0. And using the zero product property, or ZPP, splitting them into 2 and equating it to 0, I'll have x equals negative 5. And my second factor will be a fraction, which is x equals negative 7 over 3. And this is how we use ZPP in solving for x given an equation that is already factored. I'm going to call my uh, next examples uh, as the case 2 zero product property. I'm calling it case 2 because in this particular examples, I'm not going to be able to use ZPP right away because I have an equation and I need to factor them out first or use a factoring technique before I can use ZPP. And this is what I did on example number 1 for case number 2. So I have 5x squared plus 10x is equal to 0. Since I know that I can factor it out using my GCF or greatest common factor, I can pull out a 5x which is common between 5x squared and 10x and I am left with x plus 2 inside the parentheses. And now that I have two factors in my, from my equation, I can separate them into two using ZPP. Therefore, my first value, value of x will be x equal to 0 by solving for the first factor. And solving for the second factor, which is x plus 2, I'm going to have x equals negative 2 for my value or my second value of x. So I have two values of x's because I know that I have a quadratic equation. In a quadratic equation, you'll have or your possible to have a maximum of two values of x's in the process. Now for my second example, I'm going to use a different factoring technique. So I have x squared plus 7x plus 12 equals 0. The difference between number 2 and number 1 is number 2 is a complete set of quadratic equations that is factorable. And on my first example, I am missing the constant term. And if I'm given number 2, I can factor it out using my last term, which is 12 and my 7, which is my middle term. Now I just need to think of two numbers that on, when I multiply together will be 12, and when I, when I add them up will be equal to 7. And my perfect match will be 3 and 4. So therefore I have x plus 3 and x plus 4 as my factors for my quadratic equation, which is now can be separated into two using ZPP. So my first value of x will be x equals negative 3, and my second value of x will be x equals negative 4. Now, on my example number three, um, instead of using factoring right away, I need to set my equation to zero before I can factor it out. So I have h squared plus 10h equals negative 21, and I need to have my equation equal to zero, so I need to add 21 on both sides so that negative 21 will be on this side of the equation, leaving me with h squared plus 10h plus 21 equals zero. Now, I know that this quadratic equation is factorable, so I can factor it out. My last term is 21, my middle term is 10. So the two factors that I could use to match my um, quadratic equation will be 3 and 7. 3 times 7 is 21, 3 plus 7 is equal to 10. Therefore, I have x plus 7 times x plus 3 equal to 0. And using ZPP, my first values, value of x will be x equals negative 7, and my second value of x will be x equals negative 3. And for my fourth example, I have 5m squared minus 45. I'm going to use 
my greatest common factor again so I can use my ZPP to solve for M. So I have 5 outside and M squared minus 9 on my second factor. Separating them into 2, I have 5 equal to 0, which we can ignore because this one is not a solution. So my second factor, which is M squared minus 9 equal to 0, I can simplify it by solving for M. So getting rid of negative 9 by adding 9 on both sides, I'll have M squared equal to 9. Now, to get rid of my exponent, of 2 you need to take the inverse of the exponent which is your radical so take the square root of both sides and you'll have m equals plus or minus 3 and these are the values of my quadratic equation 5m squared minus 45